hey, Jedi, look, you guys have played a lot of big games over the last year or so, whether that's Nations League, World Cup qualifiers. Obviously, the other day you go into the Azteca. And obviously, this is another big game. And it's one where it's maybe a little bit different because you could see the light at the end of the tunnel a little bit. How is there any difference to, to how you guys feel going into this game? Is it, is it any different than the ones that have, have come before it? Just because, look, when you look at it, it could be the last big game of this World Cup qualifying cycle. Um, I think the team's done a really good job going into all these games, knowing you know the prize that's at the end of it. If we you know if we're successful, but also keeping our heads and keeping that you know one game at a time attitude, um, and really putting the importance on each individual game. So, like you said, we know that there's a possibility that we can qualify tomorrow. So it's obviously huge. There's going to be um, there is going to be a lot of excitement around the team. I'm very excited for it. Um, so going into it, I don't think much is going to change mindset-wise, other than. Um, you know, just trying to get the job done and knowing that hopefully if we've done our part that there's, uh, there could be a re great reward for us at the end of it. Next will be Grant Wall. Hey, Jedi. Uh, just first off, quick question for you. When we write your name in a story, would you prefer we say Jedi Robinson or Anthony Robinson? Um, honestly, you can write whatever you want. Um, yeah, Anthony Robinson or Jedi, like... The Jedi Robinson that might start making people think they've I've changed my first name legally or something. I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and then just as a follow up, I wanted to ask you about Gio Reyna. You haven't had that much interaction with him because he hasn't been in many camps with you. He has this mix of of talent and a hard edge that seems like it might be pretty special. What have you observed in that way? Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously I've been in a couple of camps with him now. He's a lovely kid, but on the when he gets on the pitch, um, you know, he's just a player who's like incredibly confident with himself, and it's backed with you know the ability he's got. So you see, he's coming on at the Aztec. It's his first game of us in the in a while, and there's no fear whatsoever. He just knows I'm going to get on the pitch and try and run the show, and that's what he did. He was really effective when he came on, and um, it's been it's been unfortunate that we haven't had him for every camp because you know we obviously want all our players to be available when possible, but. Um, you know, if this is the camp that he's going to come make a real impact and um, help us seal the deal and get to the World Cup, then um, it's going to be it's going to be an amazing feeling. But yeah, like I said, um, kid's got an unbelievable talent, and it's great to have him on the team with us. Next will be Doug McIntyre from Fox. Thanks, Michael. Hey, Jedi. Thanks for doing this. Um, you didn't play against Panama last time, but you had a vantage point on, on the bench, I think, or maybe I don't remember if you were left behind uh, for the, the third game in that window. But, you know, what lessons does the team take away from that? What, what did you see that you think you can do better uh, against them tomorrow? Thank you. Yeah, it was, it was a while ago now. I didn't um, actually travel to Panama. It was, um, you know, it was a redless country for the UK, so I think me and Zach didn't travel. But um, I remember watching the game, and we didn't, you know, we didn't quite look ourselves. Um, you know, changed quite a lot of the team over as well. Um, but obviously, you've got to give full credit to Panama; they actually played quite well. And you look at where they are on the table now; they've got a good chance of qualifying themselves. If you know, um, so that there's not um, there's a reason that they're up there. It's because they're doing well this cycle. So uh, we not we're not going to go into this game thinking, you know, oh, we're going to win the game and qualify. It's not going. It's definitely not going to be that easy. We know. Especially from the past, um, past qualifying, that every game is difficult and every team brings you know a challenge, and they're going to be giving it their everything. So we're going to have to want it more than them on the day, and hope that that combined with our quality shines through and gets us the win. Next will be Sam Stasco from the Athletic. Thanks, Michael. Hope you're doing well, Jedi. Um, I'm just curious. You know, obviously Thursday was a really difficult, physically taxing game. What has the recovery looked like? Has it been any different than what you guys have done in previous windows? And, and how are you feeling at this point in time coming off of that match? Um, yeah, I, f I feel like I do second day after every every game I play, like pretty tired. But in terms of recovery, you know, we've um, been given as much um, resources as been available. You know, the boys are doing cryo, they're doing getting on with the physio. So everyone's doing as much as they can to put themselves in the best condition going into the game tomorrow. But um, you can't. You know, you can't take away from the fact that we played two days ago. People are going to be tired going into the game tomorrow, and it's the same for the opposition. Everyone's in the same boat, so um, it's just going to be one of them that you've got to um, kind of forget that you're tired, put it to one side, and give your all. And know that we've got um, five subs available to come on if if you you know you're pushed to your limit. Thanks.
apologies, little technical difficulty. Uh, next would be Kyle Bond from Sporting. Thanks, Michael. Appreciate it. Hi, Jedi. Uh, you're, you're playing your club ball in a team that has a very free-flowing attacking mentality, and, and they're in great form. Here in CONCACAF, obviously the style a bit different. What's the adaptation like for you to come from the championship in England to World Cup? Uh, sorry, I didn't hear that last part. We lost you right at the end, Kyle. Did you say what's the difference between the championship and World Cup qualifying? Okay. Cheers, Mike. Um, yeah, no, it's, um, like you said, I've come being at a team in the championship now with Fulham where, you know, we're expected to, you know, dominate play in most games and um, we, like, we feel like we've got one of the highest quality teams in the league. It's sort of similar here, you know, we, we've, in CONCACAF I feel like we've got one of the strongest teams so we're expected to dominate most games. Um, which doesn't always go that way, especially in World Cup qualifying, everything can happen. You've got guys traveling in from here, there and everywhere, including myself. Um, and there's loads, of, lots of different adaptations, weather, pitches, even like things like referees and stuff, the style's always different. So um, there's a lot of different things that go into the games, but I feel like I've played enough games now with, with um, the US and um, even in qualifying to be able to come and change my game up uh, where needed, wherever I need to be. Um, more attacking in one game or more defensive in a game like at Mexico. So, um, yeah, that's it. We'll go to Brian Sharetta from American Soccer Now. Thank you, Jedi. Um, you know, one of the big stories from the Mexico game was uh, the, the, the good chances that were missed. Um, discuss, like, does frustration creep in at some point? Does it, does it test your mentality a lot? When, and then how is it – is this something quickly put behind you going into a game like Orlando when – you know that the team probably feels like they should have scored more goals. I mean, I feel like it's like while you're playing, it's forgotten about very quickly. It's one of them like you might hold your hands in the air and think, "Oh, we should have scored," but then you straight back at it into another play. You've got to get on with the game and you know hope to create another chance. But um, you know, it's just um, like unlucky occurrences. You get in them positions most of the time. You feel like you're going to score, but there's always them one or two chances that you miss. And unfortunately, we had a couple of them in the same game, which you know it's unfortunate for us, but. We take it, it's still a valuable point that we took away at Mexico. Um, and we move on and we go into Orlando hoping that if we create them same chances, get in them same spots, that we're on the ball and we actually do score them chances. Last question goes to Andrew Jones. Thank you, Michael. Jedi, first, congratulations on the engagement right there for you, sir, personally. I wanted to ask you, um, how Zach Steffen, who wanted to give you a fine for the music going off there just now, um, how has his leadership at the back for you, not only of a, of a night, but in this process has been, um, as well as being able to deal with Quintero, as well as Ben Canas and Murillo tomorrow night when you face off against Panama? Yes, yeah, Zach's, Zach's vital to our team. All, just having a good goalie in general at the back, we've been very fortunate that we've got well, you know, we've had Zach, Matt, um, we've got great keepers. So having the confidence that they're at the back to bail us out if we make a mistake um, is massive going into games. But, um, you know, the command in the back line are always, you know, in talks with us, telling us where to be and um, stuff like that. Sometimes the crowd gets a bit loud and you can't hear them, but most of the time, you know, they're organising it really well, passing their messages across. And it's just that little, that little extra bit that's going to help us.